Hello, I'm Professor Stephen Abbott. Welcome to the New Look HSPIP tutorial based on the 5.4th edition. In the previous video, we looked at the meaning of the HSP values of the solvents. Now we use those values to measure the HSP of an unknown, in this case, a polymer polylactic acid. We take a set of test tubes and we find that if we add methanol or hexane, the PLA is insoluble, so we give it a score of zero. Or as I prefer to say, it's unhappy in that solvent, and we give a score of zero. With other solvents, it's rather happy, and we give it a score of one. Using happy and unhappy isn't really fair for polylactic acid because it's soluble or insoluble. But if you have a cross-linked polymer, it will swell. It will never be soluble. If you have a pigment or a nanoparticle, it will disperse or will have a different sedimentation times. And the term happy and unhappy is a much better way of describing whether you scored a one or a zero. We then fit these data, clicking the button, and we get this sphere. The center of the sphere is the HSP of, in this case, polylactic acid, 18.7, 7.7, 7.0. And all the good solvents are inside, the ones in blue, and all the bad solvents in red are on the outside. And that's a unique fit in this case. One trick with HSPIP is that if you get lost in 3D space, you click the 3D reset button and you're back to a good view. So as I said, the center is the HSP of PLA. What about the radius? Well, these solvents on the edge are probably marginally soluble. So if you had a higher crystallinity PLA, or you had a higher molecular weight, these might be outside, they might be bad solvents, so the radius would be smaller. Similarly, if it's lower crystallinity, the radius might be larger. The fact that the radius depends on your particular polymer or your particular definition is an advantage because it gives you values which are relevant to your application. I fitted this with the classic Hansen fit. I can also choose to use a genetic algorithm. So I click, this takes a bit longer, and I get a different set of values, 19.6, 7, 8.5. We have to use our judgment. This isn't a fault with HSPIP, it's a fact of life because these are complex systems. When we start looking around at other aspects of PLA, we find that the classic fit happens to be more representative of the real PLA values out there. In other cases, I prefer the genetic algorithm fit. We're trying to capture complex phenomena as best we can in a practical sense so we can use these data. So choosing genetic algorithm or classic Hansen is not a problem, it's an opportunity for us to use our chemical knowledge and intuition. For PLA, it was decided to score them as 0 and 1. You can, if you wish, score them as 1 is very, very good, down to 6 is very, very bad. And the advantage of this is that you can then define your sphere, for example, just on the very good ones, the very best, these five ins, one, two, three, four, five. And in this case, with carbon nanotubes, we get 27, four. We can also say, well, the twos, and I've seen these tubes myself, are not so bad, so let's include those inside. So we can fit now with the ones and twos, and we get a bigger sphere, a larger radius, of course, because we're being more relaxed, but we get approximately the same value. So the HSP value does not depend critically on the score, but the radius does, because we're more relaxed. If I include the threes, then the fit is no good. So you have the freedom to do more sophisticated fitting, if you wish, or you can just be happy with ones and zeros if you want a general guide. The point is that HSPIP is able to be flexible to your specific needs.